Hey guys, and welcome back to Lost Bits, the series where we explore video game content that goes unused, altered, and unseen. With Pokemon popping off in popularity in the late 90s, new games were coming out left, right, and center. The mainline games, a game with Pikachu tending to the grow up, and of course, the game where you take pictures. And after years, we're finally getting a sequel on the Switch. Might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I'm definitely excited. But first, you know the drill, less than 30% of you are subscribed, yada yada. Basically, if you enjoy the video, consider letting me and the YouTube algorithm know with a like and sub if you want to find your way back. And on that note, let's go snap some pics. Go grab your cameras, it's time to find some lost bits. Now unlike most of my videos, here we'll tackle this game in reverse order and actually start things off with the final release of the game, since there's not all too much to talk about there. So first up for the final release are some unused graphics found left over. We got this graphic with some Japanese text here, and this apparently translates to start game. I assume this was from an earlier point in the game's development for the title screen. Interestingly, despite being in Japanese, this graphic is still found in the North American version of the game too. Then similarly, there's also two graphics with the same kanji symbol, one just black and white and the other sporting a blue and orange gradient. The kanji here translates to temporary, so this is clearly some sort of placeholder graphic used in development of the game. Then the only other notable thing in the final release is the presence of a secret crash debugger that can still actually be accessed with a quite complex button combination. Well, first you have to find a way to actually crash the game, then by punching in Z, R, and L together, then D-pad up and C-pad up, then A and D-pad left, then B and D-pad right, and finally D-pad down and C down, the debugger will pop up with a bunch of information. Definitely not the most interactive debug feature we've seen on the show, at least from an end-user layman's perspective, but hey, it's something. Now that's all the stuff found left over in the final release, so now let's move on to talking about some stuff that was scrapped during development. Well, first off, initially Pokemon Snap wasn't planned on being a Pokemon game at all. Revealed in an old Iwata Asks interview, Iwata mentioned that originally the game wasn't a Pokemon game, but rather just a regular old picture-taking game. Apparently this game was codenamed Jack and the Beanstalk during development. It's unclear if the game was initially going to take place in fairy tales or something, or if this is purely just a codename. This also explains the strange text appearance of Jack and Beans in the game's opening cutscene. I always assumed this was some sort of third-party dev team that was working on the game or something, but I guess they were just referencing the original project. Either way, eventually sometime around 1997, when deciding on what could captivate and motivate players to take pictures, the Pokemon idea came running. Next, apparently there was a ghost-themed course that was scrapped from Pokemon Snap during its development. This theory is basically confirmed by the game's composer, Ikuko Mimori, as she uploaded two unreleased audio tracks on her website. For both tracks, she mentions that they were meant as a stage song that was discarded due to various circumstances. The first track is called Fantastic Horror, and the second is called Theme of the Horror Boss, explicitly revealing the once existence of a horror boss fight. There aren't really any boss fights in Pokemon Snap, unless you count the final encounter with Mew One, so the existence of this scrapped horror boss might also reveal a broader battling system that too was scrapped. Anyways, that's enough blabbing about the tracks, let's give them a quick listen. Here is Fantastic Horror. And then here's a sample of the theme of the horror boss. It's pretty funky. Next, although some differences can be seen in the concept sketch of Pokemon Island, like the lack of smoke from the volcano and the addition of this track along the beach here, there are some other concept sketches found in the game's guide that potentially reveal some more scrapped courses as they appear a bit different from the levels in the game. This one here features a river with some funky looking vegetation growing around the banks, as well as what appears to be some spikes blocking an alternate route. It is also possible that this concept was reworked into the river level that we did see in the game, as I guess there are some similarities. 
The other sketch here reveals what looks to be a more gloomy stage as we can see dead trees, an unkept path, as well as what looks to be a faint full moon in the distant sky. Also, these structures kind of look like some sort of buildings with doors, but based on the perspective here, they look quite a bit smaller than a building to me, so maybe a dwelling for a smaller Pokemon like Rattata or something. Anyways, based on the stage apparently being set at night and the dead trees here, yeah, it's very likely this might have been the scrapped ghost theme course we just went over earlier. I hope we do see something like this in the Switch sequel, a dark theme like this would be awesome. Now, although there aren't any notable pre-release builds that have been leaked online yet, that is, that aren't just the Blockbuster Kiosk demo, at least to my knowledge, there is an old IGN video that has been re-uploaded on YouTube a few years back, as well as a few screenshots that show parts of the game in a much earlier developmental state, where it was still being developed for the Nintendo 64 DD. You know, the failed disk drive and 64 attachments. Various user interface graphics are different, like the film roll showing how many pictures are left. Now at first I thought this was just a placeholder that allowed for 123,456 pictures to be taken, but upon closer inspection and seeing the number 1 highlighted, it's more likely that at this point only 6 pictures were given. And this is confirmed as it looks like the roll would actually roll up the more pictures you took. It's unclear from this footage if there was only a 6 shot limit for the whole stage, or if it was like 6 pictures per roll and the character would reload the roll after each depletion. In either case, I gotta say, I'm certainly glad this change was made for release. Another noticeable change is seen in the item interface. Not only are the graphics different here, but it looks like instead of having different items mapped to different buttons, you would use the same button but would instead swap between the different items. Also, the pester ball definitely appears more like a rock in this early build, and I guess this was changed since throwing rocks at animals might have been deemed too cruel. So, throwing balls with toxic fumes was chosen instead. Then, the camera screen was also much different here, as when using it, the top and bottom sections of the screen would be covered, and yeah, this was just kind of obtrusive, not surprising this was changed. Now unfortunately there aren't any unused Pokemon kicking around in the final release, but this early gameplay actually does show off one Pokemon, Ekans, that was scrapped for release. There are only 63 photographable Pokemon in the final game, so Ekans would have made it a perfect 64 for the Nintendo 64. I almost feel like this removal is some sort of intentional cruel joke. Other Pokemon behavior can also be seen in this early footage that doesn't occur in the final like Snorlax walking around and waving at the player, Pikachu with this otherwise unused happy expression, and poor Squirtle here looking pretty sad. Now obviously the game looks much more rough around the edges in this state, but honestly I kind of like the charm of this. It has that classic Nintendo 64 beta feel. And lastly, some other changes seen from other early builds are a different logo for the game, a different camera check screen, different interfaces for viewing pictures, as well as a different album viewing screen. The pre-release one features a much more scrapbook looking style. I mean, yeah, we can see these photo holders in the final, but here we can actually see the coil of the book. Honestly, the pre-release stuff that was either reworked or never made it into the final seems really cool. Perhaps we'll see some ideas here return in the Switch sequel, but if not, we've seen numerous Pokemon leaks over the past few months here, so my fingers are crossed that hopefully one day a pre-release build of Pokemon Snap makes its way online. Until then, I guess the Switch release will have to tide me over. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this Lost Bits video. If you did, be sure to check out some of the others I've made. And as always, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I will see you in a bit.